The following program is brought to you by the faithful friends and partners of Gregory Dickow Ministries. I want to welcome you to the power to change today. And I want to share with you today out of one of my favorite verses in the whole Bible, out of Psalm 34, verse 19, perhaps it's one of yours as well. Many are the afflictions of the righteous. Now, I don't want to end there, but stop there for a second and realize we all go through afflictions, don't we? But the Bible goes on to say, but the Lord delivers him from them all. And what you're about to experience in today's program is how to be delivered from all of your afflictions, no matter what you're going through, no matter what the storm is that you're facing, I'm here to tell you today how you're going to make it. You're going to get through it no matter what. You see, the verse that I just read says we all have afflictions, but I like that little word in the middle of it, but. Don't you love that word? It means whatever came before it is all about to change. So get ready to experience the delivering hand of God. Get ready to experience God's divine interruption in your life to pull you out of whatever you're facing. He is our deliverer. Watch this and find out how. Hey gang, we all know what it's like to go through stuff, to go through trials and temptations and tests and affliction, bad stuff. People have always asked the question, why does bad stuff happen to good people? That's the wrong question to ask. The, the better question to ask is, what happens after bad stuff happens to good people? Here's the answer. After bad stuff happens to good people, the Lord delivers him out of all the bad stuff. I don't know why it all comes. I just know that it can't stay. I know that whatever you're going through right now, God promises in his word that he will deliver you. And he is your deliverer. Yes. Say it, the Lord is my deliverer. Is my deliverer. And I want to talk to you about God's delivering power and God's delivering hand. No matter what you're facing right now, many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers him out of them all. By the way, this word affliction, it means painful emotional experiences, painful physical experiences, painful financial experiences, and painful spiritual experiences. Listen, this is what it means, the word affliction. Painful emotional experiences, painful physical experiences, painful financial experiences, and painful spiritual experiences. Now, you may have found that to be the case in your life for one of those or all of the above. How many are like E, all of the above? <laughs> We've all had painful experiences, and it's, it's unscriptural, to try to pretend that, that, that we don't have them. And it, but it's also unscriptural to accept them as the final sentence of our lives. There is not a period after the part of the verse that says, many are the afflictions of the righteous. There's not a period. There's a comma. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, comma, but the Lord delivers him out of them all. Aren't you glad for punctuation like that? <laughs> comma. Not period, not exclamation point. It's not the end of the sentence. It's not the end of the line for you. It's not the end of the road. It's not the end of your life. It's not the end of your health. It's not the end of your financial condition. It's not the end of your family, the end of your marriage, the end of your children, the end of your circumstance, the end of something good in your life. It's not the end of being blessed financially. It's a comma. There's something, there is a pause in your life. There is a trial in your life. Life brings affliction. Satan brings affliction. Bad choices we make bring affliction, comma. But the Lord, 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 but the, oh, God is a divine interrupter, isn't he? Yes. But the Lord, he butts the affliction. He interrupts the affliction. He is an interrupter. And whatever's going on in your life right now, whatever trial and adversity and, and affliction that you're facing, whatever pain or unpleasant circumstance you're facing right now, the Lord is about to interrupt it. The Lord is about to interrupt that affliction. 
and it's about to change, and he's about to deliver you, because that's what the word but is. But is an interrupter. Now think of how we use the word but. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord. Whenever we use the word but, it means zero. It, it means to cancel out what came before it. Because many of you have been in a relationship where maybe you were in a relationship with somebody. You, ladies, you were in a relationship with a guy or guys, you were in a relationship with a lady and the guy says to you, lady, he says, wow, I've really enjoyed our time together. And wow, you really have amazing qualities about you. And boy, do I really like you. But how many know that what he what he just said means nothing. And the only thing that matters is what he's about to say. Because the word but cancels out everything that came before it. And that's how God is. No matter what's going on in your life, when God interrupts it, it doesn't matter what's come before. What matters is what's about to happen. Doesn't matter how bad it's been. What matters is what God's about to do. Let me give you some things God delivers us from in the Bible. Uh, um, here's a, just a few things. He, he, he delivers us from our enemies. 1 Samuel 17, verse 46. He delivers us from all of our troubles. Psalm 34, verse 17. He delivers us from all of our enemies. 2 Kings chapter 17, verse 39. He delivers our soul. Psalm chapter 6, verse 4. He delivers us from poverty and lack. Job chapter 36, verse 15. He delivers us from temptation. 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 9. Does that make sense? I know some of you might be writing it down. Get the CD. <laughs> he delivers us from fear. Hebrews chapter 2, verse 14 and 15. Hallelujah, he delivers us from fear. 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 17. He delivers us from the mouth of the lions. Delivers us from the mouth of the lions. Delivered Daniel from the mouth of the lions, didn't he? Delivered Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego from the fiery furnace. Help me now. He delivers us from evil in Matthew chapter 6, verse 6 through 12 delivers us from evil. He delivers us from persecution and affliction. Go to um, first, go to 2 Corinthians quickly, chapter 1. Oh, you're going to like this verse. Oh, I fell in love with this verse as I was um, studying this and trying to understand this a little bit better. 2 Corinthians chapter, chapter 1. And let's look at verse... Eight, he says, but we would not, brethren, have you ignorant of our trouble. We want you to know, man, we went through trouble for you. We don't want you to be ignorant of all the trouble which came to us when we were preaching the gospel in Asia. We were pressed beyond measure, beyond our strength. He said, man, we despaired even of life. But we had the sentence of death, verse 9, in ourselves that we should not trust in ourselves. Folks, when you're going through affliction, you got to get to that place. You want to be delivered? Get to that place where you don't trust in yourself anymore. You don't trust yourself to save you all the time. Sometimes we trust our mouth to save us, our lies to save us. We're going to say this and get out of trouble. No, the truth makes you free. But the point is, is you got to get to that place where you realize, you know what? I can't trust myself in myself. I got to trust in God who raises the dead, he said. We, we learned that we needed to trust God who raises the dead. Verse 10, listen now, verse 10, here it is. Who delivered us, everybody say, who delivered us. Who delivered us. He said, who delivered us from so great a death and does deliver, say, and does deliver, and does deliver. in whom we trust that he will yet deliver us. Say, he will yet deliver us. Yes. Notice this pattern. Notice the imagery in this scripture. He says three things about God's delivering power. Number one, he says, who has delivered us, past tense. And then he says, who does deliver us, present tense. And then he says, and yet will deliver us, future tense. Oh, this, this just came 
rolling over me and just healing me and ministering to me, encouraging me. This will set you free from fear. First of all, we need to realize the Lord has delivered us. Oh, God, Jesus stooped down from heaven off of his throne and came to the, to the place of a cross where felons are tried, a cross where murderers are executed, a cross where thieves are put to justice. And he came down from heaven and took our place on the cross, suffered for us. He became sin for our sin, became a curse for our curse, became wounded for our healing, and with his stripes were healed. Oh, beloved, his blood was shed. He has delivered you. You've got to remember and go back to the cross. That's where he delivered you. Don't ever forget where you came from. Don't ever forget what he delivered you from. Don't ever forget you were a sinner, but you've been saved by God's grace, and now you're a child of God. You were sin, but he made you righteous. You were a child of the devil, but he made you a child of God. You were a child of rebellion, but he made you a child of obedience. You were a child of wrath, but he made you a child of peace and reconciliation with God. You were a child who was broken, and he healed you. You were sick, and he healed you. You were broke, and he, re and he restored you and repaired you and blessed you and prospered you and gave you something to live for. He pulled you out of a miry pit and put your feet upon a rock and gave you a new song to sing, and now you have a reason to live. Now you have joy in your heart. Listen, you might not have it all together, but think about where you were and where you'd be without him today. Oh, he has delivered you. Yes, he has. He has delivered you from sin. He has delivered you from your past. He has delivered you from the devil. He has delivered you from yourself. Oh, beloved, we serve a God. Yes, he first has already delivered us. And when you begin to think about all that he's delivered you from, think about I think about it, folks. I think about how stoned on drugs I was, how I'd come home from school during the lunch break and get drunk, get stoned drunk, and go back to school just and just filled with drugs, filled with alcohol, filled with the artificial substitutes because of the emptiness in my soul. And they say, oh, once you're an alcoholic, you're always an alcoholic. But that's not what God says. He said, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. The old things are passed away. All things have become new. He delivered me. I was so lonely. I was so lonely and broken and no one, I felt in my heart at just such a young age, no one understood me. I felt rejected, lost, and hopeless. But he loved me and he accepted me. Oh, he delivered me from rejection and loneliness. I felt so afraid and insecure in my life, and he delivered me from all my fears. Psalm 34, verse 10, seek the Lord, and he'll deliver you from all your fears. Verse 9 and 10, look that up later. He delivered me from all my fears. He delivered me from a life of purposelessness and gave me a reason to live. Oh, yes, the Lord has delivered. Think of what he's delivered you from. Forget about what you don't have in your life. Think about what he's delivered you from. Think about where you'd be without him. Where would you be today without him? Lost, going to hell, broken, defeated, discouraged. But worse of all, sentenced to death eternally in hell forever. But the Lord, but the Lord, but the Lord, but God, but God, but God. Everybody say, but God. <laughs> Who has delivered us. And then look at what he says. And does deliver us. He has delivered us. And because we have the memory and the recounting of what he has done, we have expectancy for what he is doing. He does now deliver us because God is not just past, he's present. What does it say? Psalm 46, verse 1. He is a very present help in our time of trouble or in our time of need. A very present help. And finally, he says, who has delivered us 
who does deliver us and who yet will deliver us. Oh, hope and confidence for the future. If he has and he is, then he will. And we can go into the future without anxiety. We can go into the future without fear. We can go into the future without worry. Because he has. He does. And he will. Because he is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Now, gang, now, gang, how does he do it? How does he do it quickly? How does he do it? The first way that God delivers us is through prayer. Now, it's not in this order necessarily, but through prayer. Jesus said, when they said, well, Lord, teach us to pray. Remember that? And Jesus said, pray this way in Matthew chapter 6. And he said, he said, pray this way. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we forgive others. And lead us not into temptation, but, but God... But the Lord, deliver us from evil. You wake up in the morning, man, and pray, Lord, deliver me from evil. You face in your life trials, tr temptations, circumstances that you're facing, pray, God, deliver me today. Today, Lord, deliver me from evil. Deliver me from evil situations. Deliver me from evil people. Deliver me from evil demons. Deliver me from evil decisions that I'm even tempted to make because your decisions have power too. And God, deliver me from bad decisions. Deliver me from even the bad harvest of the seeds that I've sown. Deliver me and teach me to walk according to your kingdom and purpose. But Lord, deliver me right now from this present evil. Deliver me from these evil people, from this person or that. Deliver me from this circumstance that... Pray. You want to tap into God's power and God's delivering hand? Pray. Lord, deliver me from evil. Amen. Amen. How else do we tap into God's delivering power? Call upon him. Call on him. The name of Jesus will deliver you. Jesus will rescue. You. There are people that have been that, that have been in plane crashes going down and calling out when everybody else is dying and they call out on the name of Jesus and the Lord deli has delivered them. This has happened, folks. Other people that have called on the name of Jesus and they've been rescued from circumstances and situations. Call on his name. Romans chapter 10 verse 13 says, For all who call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. But the word is actually, All who call upon the name of the Lord shall be delivered. Number one, pray. Number two, call on the name of the Lord. Number three, embrace the power of the Holy Spirit. Folks, God gives us the baptism of the Holy Spirit not so we can just dip our feet in the water of his love and power and spirit and anointing. He wants us to jump in. He's given us the, the anointing of the Holy Spirit. We need to embrace the power of it so that we can have uh, the boldness that comes from being baptized in the Holy Spirit, so that we can have the gifts of the Spirit that come from being baptized in the Holy Spirit, so we can have the, the anointing to succeed and the anointing to lay hands on the sick and the anointing to cast out devils and the anointing to speak in new tongues and the anointing to, 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 to be healed of our sicknesses or circumstances we're facing. Oh, embrace the power of the Holy Spirit and don't, don't, don't sit sit by the edge and say, well, let somebody else uh, be bold and let somebody else have that kind of power. I don't want to, I'm afraid, I don't want to dabble in that. What if it's demonic? The power of God to deliver and to set free and to heal and to give you the gifts of the Spirit, that's the power of God. That's not the power of the devil. Of course the devil doesn't want you to speak in tongues. Of course the devil doesn't want you to lay hands on the sick and see him heal. Of course the devil doesn't want you to embrace the power of the Holy Spirit because he wants you to remain powerless and he wants you to remain in bondage and he wants you to remain limited and confined to your present condition and circumstance. But God wants you to embrace the power of his spirit. We need the word of God and we need the spirit of God. Amen. Amen. Refuse to buy the lie that things have to remain the same, same in your life. Refuse to accept that. Don't embrace that lie. If you want to see the delivering hand of God, refuse to tolerate that things have to remain the same in your life. No, God, God doesn't leave anything in the same condition that he finds it. So refuse to accept the lie that things have to remain the same. And one last passage and one last thing that will trigger this, this delivering power of God. It says in Psalm 91, what a great, beautiful verse. Psalm 91. He says, verse 
14, because, God says, because he has set his love upon me, therefore I will deliver him. Because we set our love upon God, he will deliver us. Deliverance comes through the love exchange between us and God. Listen, God so loved the world that he gave his son. How do we love God back? Give him your life. How do you love God back? Give him your mind, your thought life. Give him your heart, which is your treasures, your des desires, your money, all of that. Give him your body. Come on, help me now. You know what it means to give your body to something. Give your body to God. Give your life to God. He loved us so that he gave. Let us now love him in return and let us give him our life. As you love him, as you express your love through real life exchange with God, he delivers you. The delivering hand of God invades your life, interrupts your life when you pray, interrupts your life when you call on the name of the Lord. The delivering hand of God interrupts your life when you embrace the power of his spirit and his anointing. The delivering hand of God interrupts your life when you refuse to buy the lie that things have to remain the same. And the delivering hand of God interrupts your life when you express your love and set your love upon him. And don't, and don't take it back. Don't love him because you feel like it. Love him because he loved you. Don't love him because everything's going good. Love him because he loved you. Don't love him because you got it all figured out and you're really happy with everything in your life. Love him because he loved you. And when you set your love upon him, his delivering hand is going to come in, disconnect you from the thing holding you back, rescue you from the thing you've been in bondage to, Deliver you from the pain that you've experienced emotionally, physically, financially, spiritually and set you on high and you'll walk where angels dare. You'll walk in the greatness of God's purpose for your life. You'll walk above and not beneath. Blessed in the city and in the field. Blessed coming in and going out. Blessed and everything that you put your hand to. In Jesus' name. Discover the power of your covenant rights with God. In his four-part CD series, Deliver Me From Evil, Pastor Gregory Dickow will share proven strategies for responding when circumstances, people, or demonic forces threaten your home, your health, and every area of your life. Order your copy of this life-changing CD series for the low gift of only $30. And there's more. You will also receive the live recorded CD presentation, The Lord Our Deliverer, where Pastor Dickow reveals the practical how-tos for your personal deliverance. This special CD presentation is available individually for a gift of any amount or completely free when you order today's teaching offer. But that's not all. Pastor Dickow will also include his special DVD teaching, Help in Your Time of Need. Discover the secrets to answered prayer and guaranteed results when you need them most. With your order today, he will send you help in your time of need, a $15 value free. That's the four-part CD series, Deliver Me From Evil. For the low gift of only $30 plus, receive the CD presentation, The Lord Our Deliverer, and the DVD teaching, Help in Your Time of Need, and the Divine Protection Confession Book, absolutely free. That's a total value of nearly $60 for your small gift of only $30. Today's teaching offer and free gifts are only available while supplies last. Release the power of deliverance in your life. Call now. Well, I want to pray for you in just a couple of moments, and I'm going to believe God with you for your deliverance, for you to be delivered from whatever you're facing right now. Some of us need to be delivered from fear. Some of us need to be delivered from temptation. Some of us need to be delivered from an addiction or whatever the case may be, you may, whatever fiery furnace that you're in, whether it's financial, whether it's physical, whether it's emotional, God knows how to deliver us 
from the midst of our trial. He knows how to deliver us out of the fiery furnace. It's time for you to experience all that God has for you. His freedom, His deliverance, His power. You know, even one of the things that Jesus taught in the Lord's Prayer is He said, Lord, he said to pray, Lord, deliver us from evil. Well, I believe sickness is evil. I believe financial problems are evil. I believe depression is evil. I don't mean that you're evil because you're going through that, but those are things that God doesn't want you to have to live in. God said that He would deliver us, and He wants to deliver us. And I've put together now some teaching that I want to put in your hands, and I want to equip you with these delivering tools and help you to experience the hand of God intervening in your life. So get my teaching. My announcer already told you about Deliver Me From Evil, which will show you step by step how to experience the delivering hand of God, how God will interrupt you in the midst of or interrupt your negative circumstances and intervene in your life. And um, it, it also includes my teaching help in your time of need. Isn't that, in fact, in, I think it's Psalm chapter 12, one of the greatest prayers that David ever prayed, and it just said, help, Lord. He just, that's what he said, help, Lord. Isn't that sometimes your prayer? Maybe that's all you can get out of your mouth. Well, you know what? I'm going to show you simply how God will bring the help that you need and how God will bring the protection that you need. And I want to send you today's teaching in its entirety and put it in your hands. My announcer will tell you more, and I'll be right back to pray for your supernatural deliverance right after this. Watch this. That's the four-part CD series, Deliver Me From Evil. For the low gift of only $30 plus, receive the CD presentation, The Lord Our Deliverer, and the DVD teaching, Help In Your Time Of Need, and the Divine Protection Confession Book, absolutely free. Today's teaching offer and free gifts are only available while supplies last. Release the power of deliverance in your life. Call now. Well, no matter what's coming against you right now, no matter what you're facing, no matter what fire you're in the middle of, God is your deliverer and He's going to deliver you. Let's agree together right now. Father, You know what my brother is going through right now. You know what my sister is going through right now. You know what each person is facing right now. And I'm asking You to intervene supernaturally, to deliver them from temptation, deliver her from the fear Deliver him from the discouragement. Deliver her from the depression. Whatever each viewer is facing, Lord, I thank you for your divine hand of deliverance, turning their situation around, intervening, and rescuing them now. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, the Lord is your deliverer, and when you know that, everything's going to be all right. Don't miss our next broadcast. Do what my announcer said. It'll encourage you and bless you, and I can't wait to see you then. God bless. This program has been brought to you by the faithful friends and partners of Gregory Dickow Ministries.